J-A-C-O-B, last name Z-I-V, I'm from Israel. My home base is Haifa, and we're the Technion. Okay, are we okay? So, uh, tell me a little bit your perspective on innovation. What makes you interested in it? What's your background with it, and why are you here? Okay, uh, my background is the following. I'm, I, first of all, I'm a professor at the uh, leading technical university in Israel, the oldest one, to Technion. And uh, one of the uh, most active areas is uh, information technology there. But, uh, and it's a very good school. We're trying to uh, be better and better, of course. And the, but aside from that, I had some administrative jobs on the way which are connected with innovation. Uh, until three years ago, I was the uh, four years ago, actually, I was the president of the Israel Academy of Science, and in that capacity, uh, what I was looking for is actually building bridges between the uh, ivory tower, the universities, and the industry, and the, uh, without really letting the government do it for us, you know. So the, we found something which is unique in Israel, I don't know whether it will work, in other places or not, but in Israel it has been working very nicely. We formed a, an informal forum uh, where the participants are all the uh, main supporters of R&D in Israel, government agencies, starting with the University Grants Committee, the chief scientists of the Ministry of Industry. Uh, we have a small Ministry of Science. Um, the Ministry of Defense was presented there, and the Treasury too. Now, the idea was to try and identify missing infrastructures which su will support innovation. And the idea was not to, once you identify such an area, not to go and beg the government for more money, because this doesn't work, you know. Because when you go, everybody goes to the government but rather to convince ourselves, the members of the forum, that uh, this particular area is important, and if this was achieved, then each one of these agencies open up their own budget and pull resources together to push the, uh, uh, the project to. And we have been quite successful. The last biggest and biggest uh, um, uh, initiative was one which is going on right now, in uh, nanotechnology. It's an initiative uh, which amounted to $250 million for five years, which for Israel is quite a lot. And the sources are government, the universities themselves, and some private money, mostly donations. And the, uh, but most of it goes into infrastructure, like building, you know, buying electron microscopes and so forth. The condition, however, is that although the heavy equipment will be uh, installed in the universities and help the researchers in the universities, they must let the industry use the same uh, uh, equipment when needed and uh, without really charge, overcharging them. And this wasn't easy, but it has been working. For example, at Technion, in nanotechnology right now, 30% of the uh, equipment time, uh, time is being utilized by the industry, which is, I think, is a, a success. Uh, there are other examples uh, like that. Now, I don't know how long it will last, because it's a voluntary form, you know, and uh, if two members will, will say one day that they won't want to play anymore, that will be the end. But. Uh, it's an interesting experiment, and I like that very much. And I still, although I'm not president of the academy anymore, I still chair this forum. So okay. this is a... So what's one question about the future of innovation that you want to learn, what, that you want to learn the answer to, and that might have driven your curiosity here today? Well, again, I must uh, take the Israeli angle. I mean, we, as you know, we were quite successful in attracting uh, VC money, and we have many, many startups. But what we didn't know how to do as yet is how to cross the glass ceiling 
namely the stage where you switch from a small startup to an intermediate sized company. We failed on that and you don't there aren't too many big companies in Israel, even in an intermediate uh, sized company. In communication there might be two, that's all. There's one big company in uh, in uh, biotechnology, but uh, and, uh, but uh, in a pharmaceutical company, Teva, which is huge. But aside with that, we don't have an Nokia, for hmm. example. So, oh, uh, is there any one thing you've learned today here that surprised you, or excited you, or disagreed with? Uh, it's too early to tell. I think that the too too much, starting with criticism, I think that too much effort was put on trying to exactly define what innovation is. I think that the accent should be on trying to understand what in the innovation process is and to look for ways to facilitate the process rather than to exactly define what it is. Because I have the feeling that it's somewhat like the Heisenberg principle in physics. If you try to measure something exactly, you might kill it mm. in a way. So, but on the other hand, I mean, uh, first of all, most of the problems are universal, that's clear. And um, I was happy to find out that when talked about uh, uh, clusters, that the idea of having virtual clusters came up because I think that this is what the future is rather than to be localized, you know, because uh, localization doesn't mean much although Prime Minister might love it, you know, right. because it helps the economy, but uh, looking from the um, world universal point of view it's, I've learned that and this was a new concept to me in a sense that the actually virtual clusters is the right way to go Apparently so, and I wait to see uh, what will happen. Great, thanks so much. Okay, mm -hmm. that was really good.